version 1.34.2 has just dropped for the peerless virtual desktop app, costing £18.99 in the UK and is available on all Meta and Pico headsets. The developer has been working hard to optimise your wireless gaming experience and has introduced not one, but five new features into this timeless software that can increase the performance of your PC, regardless of its spec and GPU. This is not a virtual desktop setup guide though. If you want to know how to get this app running on your PC and how to optimize it for maximum performance, please check out this video here, then come back for a breakdown of the new features. Plus, you should stay till the end of the video where I have a frankly insane combination of old and new settings that can increase your GPU headroom by a very unexpected margin. So make sure you stay till the end for that. First of all, we must make sure you're running version 1.34.2 on your PC. Click here to show hidden icons, find the streamer app, right click then open settings. You can check the version number by looking here or clicking the about tab and checking for updates. On your headset, open virtual desktop and look here. If you aren't running the latest version, go to your app library, find virtual desktop, click the three dots in the top right corner and manually update your software. So, what is new in version 1.34.2? It's not often I get excited by an update, but one of these new features is properly groundbreaking and can increase your GPU headroom by some margin. So why is that important? More GPU headroom gives you more opportunities to pump the graphics of your game up to some insane levels. So, I've devised a series of tests to push new features and see just how far we can take them. I will be playing Half-Life Alex with all graphics settings at Ultra on 90 FPS. Then I'll play Le Mans Ultimate, a notoriously difficult game to run in VR with graphics on high at 72 FPS. And finally, a bit of Contractor Showdown Xfield on high Ultra at 120 FPS because you need those extra frames to gain an advantage over your enemies. Just for reference, Big Bertha is rocking a 12th gen i9, an RTX 4080 GP and 32 gig of DDR5 RAM and all the footage you are seeing was recorded using OBS which is a free capture tool. I've put a link in the description down below. These were my in headset settings which did not change throughout apart from the FPS and this is the basic PC streamer app settings to start with. Changes were made during testing but I'll detail them as we go along. The performance graph is provided by an overlay from FPS VR, a very useful Steam VR tool which is currently £3.99 in the UK. Horizontal and vertical field of view tangent. When you open the updated streamer app you will notice a new tab called advanced. Click that and you will see four new features. We will deal with FOV stencil and boost game priority a bit later in this video but now I want to concentrate on the horizontal and vertical field of view tangent sliders. These two settings allow you to adjust the FOV or field of view that is rendered effectively cropping the edges of the screen to improve performance. This reduces the number of pixels that need to be rendered by your GPU allowing a higher frame rate and smoother gameplay. That's a very simplistic explanation for a very clever solution but hey I'm a simple man. However if you reduce the FOV too far, you will introduce some very prominent black bars in your headset view. So we must balance performance over immersion. In my testing, I found that horizontal FOV at 85% and vertical FOV at 65% worked best for me. Any lower on the horizontal slider and you start to get binocular vision or you feel a bit cross-eyed and any lower on the vertical slider will introduce very prominent black bars. The footage you see running in the background is Half-Life Alex on Ultra at 90 FPS and I honestly couldn't push the game any harder. Everything was maxed out. On the left is the game running with no FOV slider and the right is my preferred FOV slider settings. As you can clearly see, my GPU headroom is significantly decreased by 10 to 15% in places while GPU VRAM use is reduced by approximately 10% at a pretty rock solid 90 FPS. That is insane considering how much detail is in this scene and the action going on. 
Moving on to Le Mans Ultimate, we are racing at the iconic Spa-Francorchamps circuit in the 2024 GT3s with a field of 20 cars. At the start, you will notice the frame rate dip to between 60 to 65 FPS, but once through the first few corners, the frame rate hits a steady 72 FPS. This is quite incredible because Le Mans Ultimate is notorious for running very badly in VR. Previously, I was running on low settings with shadows turned off and hoping the sudden wouldn't break through the clouds and tank my FPS. Now, I'm running on mostly high with a few of the more punishing settings on medium like shadows, reflections and particles. It has transformed the game for me as it now looks as good as it drives. Moving on to a competitive shoot, I played Contractor's brand new Xfil mode, a crazy cross between like Tarkov, Ghosts of Tabor and Call of Duty DMZ. Frame rate is everything in this type of game as a millisecond delay could be the difference between life and death, usually death in my case. I ran the game on ultra graphics except for the anti-aliasing which was set to high. Unfortunately, my spawn wasn't very good for showing off the performance gains of the FOV slider as I ended up in a massive field of flowers, but the frame rate was still solid and the game looked great. More importantly, when I got into a firefight, the FPS remained consistent, meaning my shots were actually going where I aimed them and I wasn't affected by lag spikes. All in all, with a horizontal FOV slider at 85% and the vertical slider at 65%, my performance gains were pretty impressive, but can you squeeze more juice out of these sliders? Well, I wouldn't recommend lowering the horizontal slider any lower. You start to feel cross-eyed and it's not comfortable, but you can reduce the vertical slider to 50% if you are playing a sim racing title like Automobilista 2, a set of course at Evo, or Le Mans Ultimate, for example. In these types of games, the bars are less noticeable as you tend to stare straight ahead when driving, and this means the bars are less intrusive. But for playing games viewed from a first-person perspective, like Contractor Showdown or Half-Life Alex, the bars can be very distracting. FOV Stencil and Boost Game Priority FOV Stencil basically does not render the edges of your screen for a modest performance increase. Use this if you're streaming your game on YouTube or Twitch. It will compensate for the extra load of using your favourite broadcast software without hitting the performance of your game. It cannot be used if you move the FOV tangent sliders. Leave them at 100% if you want to use this feature. Plus, check your output before streaming. This feature can cause the right left top and right left bottom corners to appear clipped, just so you are aware. Boost game priority can be used if you suffer freezing while playing. It increases the GPU priority of the game, but can introduce some latency, just so you are aware. The next two features can only be used with MetaQuest 3, 3S or Pico 4 Ultra, as they can utilize either the HEVC 10-bit or AV1 10-bit codecs. Adaptive quantization and two-pass encoding. I am not clever enough to understand this, so I have a direct quote from Reddit user JakeJM79. Adaptive quantization allows the encoder to vary compression within a frame to improve subjective visual quality. It can distribute bits to provide more data to areas of a frame that are more complex for the encoding process. It can also reduce smear in high motion and sports content. In layman's terms, it reduces compression artifacts in dark places. So now all the internet warriors who say, oh, I refuse to play wirelessly because of compression can finally wind in their adenoids and f <laughs> Two pass encoding improves the compression quality caused by stream encoding and decoding via Wi-Fi to standalone headsets. It will increase your encode latency due to the extra processing and will eat into your GPU headroom, just so you were aware, but if you are running a headset and GPU combination that allows to use HEVC 10-bit or AV1 10-bit like a Quest 3 and a 40 series Nvidia card, I would recommend you tick this box. Before I get to my final sneaky setting that will give you even more GPU and VRAM headroom, my channel is on the way to 20,000 subs, so please like this video, the algorithm loves the likes. Hit the subscribe button and consider joining my channel membership. Thanks. FOV sliders plus VDXR runtime. 
Virtual Desktop has its own runtime called VDXR, accessed from the PC Streamer tab options window under Open XR Runtime. This bypasses SteamVR to eke out a bit more horsepower from your GPU. Now, if you combine that with the horizontal and vertical FOV slider settings that I gave you at the beginning of the video, you can get even more performance. Take this screenshot as an example. On the right is Half-Life Alex running my recommended FOV slider settings plus VDXR runtime against no FOV slider using SteamVR. GPU percentage at 56% versus 75% plus VRAM usage is two gigabytes lower. I think you agree that that is an insane performance gain by just basically clicking a few buttons. There is a caveat, however, not all games work with VDXR and you lose most, if not all, SteamVR functionality and overlays like FPS VR or Live. This part is up to you to experiment with, sort of like homework for nerds. And that's it for the brand new virtual desktop settings available in the version 1.34.2 update. What do you think? Were you able to gain more horsepower using my settings? Is there a setting you use that you think I've missed? Or are you totally baffled by all the tech jargon? You know the drill. Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. If you love this content, please subscribe and join my channel membership like these lovely people did. You get custom badges, emojis, and early access to most of my content. If you want to watch more content from me, please click here or here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.